What is up, my planeswalkers? So, today, I'm not going to do just a standard unboxing, unwrapping of who's you, what's it's, and whatnot. Uh, this is the start of a new thing that I'm wanting to do, um, partly for myself, but partly for the enjoyment of the internet. And that is to uh, start with an unboxing of the Planeswalker decks. Now, you know these are not generally seen as competitive, and by not generally seen as competitive, I mean they are not. Uh, I mean, you can see right here on the front, this Liliana here, so beautiful. I love her so. Um, she is a five cast for a four loyalty Planeswalker with some very vanilla generic abilities. Now, these abilities are pretty good, and we'll talk about this as we go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox it, going to review the overall product unaltered. Then, in my next video, I am going to do a rebuild using the same cards that are available in it. So, for example, on the M19s, it would just be the M19 cards. That's all I can use to rebuild it. But, like, say if I were to go back and rework, I don't know, the Ajani from Aether Revolt, well... For that one, they use both Kaladesh and Aether Revolt cards. So I could use both of those when rebuilding, uh, only using the cards that are available there. And I'll do a good build, the best that you can possibly get from the available cards, and a budget build, uh, something that uh, ideally isn't going to go over about 20 bucks. So let's crack this baby open, uh, start talking about the reviews on it, and uh, we'll move forward from there. Now, I'm sure you know that the uh, core sets, uh, Planeswalker decks, are all monocolored. Uh, you can see by the top here, this is mono black, which makes sense considering, you know, Liliana. Um, so, first we'll talk about the Liliana Planeswalker card. No damage. No. Ah, awesome. All right. So, if you haven't seen her yet, shame on you. Uh, but we'll talk about her. So she is a five cost, two black and three colorless for a four loyalty planeswalker. Uh, her first plus ability, target player loses two life. Just off the top. Um, not sure exactly why you'd want to do that to yourself, but you can, I guess, if you want to. Um, her minus one, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, that's... Decent graveyard recursion, not super wonderful on a planeswalker since now she has no defense. Uh, you have to have creatures in play, otherwise she'll get pinged to crap to death. And her ultimate, destroy up to two target creatures, put up to two creature cards from graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. So, you can kill stuff, and then bring it back from the graveyard under your control, as long as they're not tokens when you kill them. Or whatever else is in a graveyard that you want back. Not awful. Now, her foiling is really kind of cool. And you can see this with the foil on the, the magic and the foil on the headdress. So that's pretty nifty. That was just, you know, an aesthetic. So let's get into the box. Comes in a cool box. Says Liliana on the side. Uh, now, one of the big differences between these Planeswalker packs and other ones is that they only come with one, count it, one booster box, or booster pack that comes with it. Uh, now the price also reflects that. Uh, it was a $16 price tag to get before, now it's a $12 price tag. So they bumped it down by $4 and took out a, a booster pack. Uh, if you do still want the extra booster pack for building purposes, you can just buy another one, because um, unless you're buying it from Walmart, Pretty much your local game store will have it for $4 or less per pack. Uh, these, not important. Toss them away. All right. In the deck. We've got... Demon of Catastrophes. Now, the Demon of Catastrophes is great, just in general. Uh, there's a lot of hate going out for this guy because he has a four drop that you have to sacrifice a creature to make. But... When he comes out, he is a 6-6 Flying Trample. There is no saying that you can't cast this in your second main phase. You attack, 
then you sacrifice a creature. And then the next turn, you have a 6-6 Flying Trample to attack with. Uh, I mean, it... Yes, you have to be, you know, cautious in how you play it, but absolutely play Demon of Catastrophes. He is great. Grave Waker. Uh, Grave Waker is a 5-5 Flyer, uh, as you can see there. Uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped for 7 mana. Late game, if you really need it, I guess you can use it. Uh, when I remake this, I'll probably get rid of Grave Waker because a 6-drop is not playable most of the time unless you're super casual. Uh, Liliana Spoils. Sorcery card. Good, good. Target opponent discards a card. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a black card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, a little bit of, uh, you know, card advantage there. Not a Great casting cost, but um, in a casual deck like this, what do you expect? Got two copies of that. Um, and yes, I, I believe that the last three that I just talked about, the Grave Waker and Liliana Spoils, those are Planeswalker deck-specific cards. So in the remake, I need to keep at least two of those, I think, because uh, otherwise that goes against all that. So, Swamps. Now we're into the commons and uncommons. Uh, abnormal Endurance. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Uh, that's great versus any sort of uh, removal, or if you just want to eat something big and bad. Blood Divination. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, draw three cards. Again, the casting cost is really off-putting four to do that and you'd have to sacrifice a creature in order to get three cards probably not going to make the final cut when it comes to remake diagraph ghoul now diagraph ghoul is a great one to start with turn one drop him out turn two you're swinging for two but late game if you top deck him you really aren't super pleased about it because he is going to give you no advantage at all. Because he, he's not even a, a, a late game blocker until the turn after he comes in. So he is a great target for uh, Demon of Catastrophes. Gravedigger. Nice and uh, familiar for everybody. Bringing things back from the battlefield or from the um, graveyard to your hand. Lich's Caress. Destroy target creature. You gain three life. Murder. Destroy target creature. Reassembling skeleton. Uh, return reassembling skeleton from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So that's a, uh, in, a good one to, uh, to sacrifice the Demon of Catastrophes. Yeah, you gotta cast it again, but... Eh. You get a 6-6 six, six flying demon. Skeleton archer. Uh... Being able to ping things is always a good option, uh, especially if they're playing something that you don't want. Uh, well, with that one, I mean, yeah, he's he's kind of nice, but he's a 3-3 body, which means that he's, he's good versus everything except for uh, the most heinous of burn spells. But four to cast? That's... Mm, it's kind of off-putting. Skymarsh Bloodletter, 2-2 two -two Flyer. When he enters the battlefield, target opponent loses his life, and you gain a life. For, for three. Not, not awful. Sovereign's Bite. Target player loses three life, and you gain three life. A good, solid black card there. Probably going to put a couple more of those in, in the uh, budget build. Um, Strangling Spores. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Good removal, especially for those uh, indestructible types. Uh, Vampire Sovereign, 3-4 uh, Flyer for 5. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses 3 life, and you gain 3 life. It's looking like there's some alternate lifelink style theme going on. Might have to make sure we keep that when we uh, rework it. Uh, Walking Corpse, a 2-2 two -two for 2. That's the, uh, the Black Bear, basically. Meteor Golem. 
From what I understand, this is in every single Planeswalker deck, because when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Yeah, he costs seven, but when he enters the battlefield, he does a thing. So if you were to happen to do that with the ridiculously overpriced, hey, look, that's his casting cost. So he comes out, he dies, you bring him back. He's tapped, it doesn't matter, he still destroys a thing. And you can do that again and again if you want, I guess. I don't know. Arisen Gorgon. Uh, death touch as long as you control a Lily on a Planeswalker. That's nice and might get cut. Because, uh, yes, it's a uh, Liliana deck exclusive because it's 292 out of 280. So it's part of the uh, Planeswalker deck exclusives. But um, the likelihood of having a Liliana on the field, you have a 1 in 60 chance of each of the cards that you pull. And if you don't pull it the first time, then you, ha you have a 1 in 59 chance. So it, it just goes down and down. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Tattered Mummy. When it dies, each opponent loses two life. Excellent target for the uh, Demon of Catastrophes. Oh, look, you lose two life. And I get a 6-6 six, six flying trampled demon of death. And there are four copies of that in there. So, overall, it is a nice, solid, casual deck. You could take this versus your friends that don't know how to build decks. And you could probably win because there's at least some cohesion to what it is that we're doing here. So, when it comes down to it, uh, you have to ask yourself, why are they doing this thing that they're doing? Well, it is to get new players in. So this, for a new player, um, is probably something that they wouldn't think to build, uh, because, yeah, it's black, and yeah, it's following black stuff, but um, a lot of the new folks... They're like, oh, I gotta get the big creatures, all the big creatures, all the time. They go crazy about, you know, how, how to build things. So having something that they can just buy for $12 and uh, gives them something that they can start with and a little something extra that might uh, help them out. We'll see. So without any further ado, let's uh, crack this open and see what kind of value I can get out of it. Uh, now, I did pay the full $12 MSRP for the uh, for the deck here, and uh, I'm hoping that this has something in it to make the rest of it worthwhile, because really the only card that has a, any value in the Liliana Planeswalker deck is the Liliana Planeswalker herself. Um, I don't think that anything else has any real monetary value. So... Uh, we're going to skip past all the commons because nobody really cares about those. I mean, they do because they're useful, but there's only so much use there. All right. Reclamation Sage. Not going to go into mono black. Seder Enchanter. Not going to go mono black. Knightly Valor. What? And Open the Graves. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. That is a decent card. It really is. The five casting cost is a pain in the butt, but late game is when you're going to be losing a lot of your creatures anyway. So having that out there is good. Demon of Catastrophes, you don't even lose a creature. You sacrifice something, and a token creature gets created in its place. And, oh, got a foil. Trusty Pack Beast. Ooh, shiny foil. 2-3 three for 3. When it enters the battlefield, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So, bleh. And like my 7th Nickel Bowl is the Ravager token. And a Dragon token. So, that's it for this video. Make sure that if you liked it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I will be putting out additional things as we go along throughout the month. Uh, ideally, I'm going to post uh, one of these on Thursday. Uh, the following Monday or Tuesday, I'll have the uh, budget and um, you know, as, as good as you can make it, I guess, budget, non-budget versions of this deck. Uh, we're going to stick to the main themes if possible, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be good. 
So I'll catch you next time, Planeswalkers.